Good morning, everybody. Welcome to The Nameless Show. I'm your host, Doman Torah. For this beautiful, hopefully, January 6, 2016, I apologize. This may be a little bit short of a show. Uh, we're still getting in the hang of it. This is episode two. Still getting in the groove of it, and part of that getting in the groove means I kind of forgot about this until I was lying in bed, showered, shaved. I Actually, I don't shave. I use a Gillette buzzer. Gillette, sponsor me. I'll take it. I'll take it. I was lying in bed, showered, skin's all clean, pajamas feel nice, only I don't wear pajamas. Picture that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so I'm lying in bed, plug in my phone, bring up YouTube, because that's what I like to do, to be honest. I like watching Pirate of Judge Judy. Now, if I could get Judge Judy streaming, I would totally do that. But in the meantime, I'm going to watch it on YouTube if somebody's going to post it on YouTube, because it's not illegal to stream it. It's only illegal to upload it and download it. I don't advocate illegal activity, so I'm lying in bed. I got some Judge Judy queued up, which is hard as hell to find on YouTube. There. I mean, good job, YouTube. Your copyright, 10 out of 10. And just when I find a, a, an actual episode, I smack that little tap, 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 tap on my phone. I remember, wait, there was something I was supposed to do today. What was I supposed to do today? Feed the cat? No, I fed the cat. Eat? No, I did, I did plenty of that. Go to work? No, no, did that already. Um, oh, yeah, record the show. Right, yeah, I apologize, my head, uh, my head's not in it, it's been a, um, it's been a crazy 2016 so far, I think I've really figured out, after five, six days, what 2016 has in store for me, 2016 seems to be intent on being the year that I I learn to handle shit. And I don't mean that I don't handle shit already. Bad stuff happens, and I keep going. Lots of stuff happens, and I keep going. But I don't always keep going. Well, bad things... You know, a family member passes away. I still keep going to work. But I stop doing the dishes. And things start to spiral at home. At work get overwhelmed with stuff. I still get everything done, but I'm a crabby asshole while I'm getting it done. At work, since this year started, it has been a barrage of of things to do. Getting ready for the quarter one. For those who don't know, which is probably everybody, I work in, pardon me, whew, had a burrito earlier. Quite a bit earlier, actually. Whew, Taco Bell, which is also welcome to sponsor me, as is Pepto-Bismol. I work in retail, and uh, the start of the quarter means there's a lot of change on you know, signage, displays, merchandising, even just where things are located in the store changes around this time of year. And as a supervisor, I get a little bit more of that than, than everyone else. And the supervisor where I work is kind of this weird middle position where yeah, you know, I'm not a manager, although thanks to commission commissioned items, I, I, I make roughly what the lowest level manager would get, so that's kind of nice, I guess. Um, but, but I'm not quite manager, where I can tell people what to do, but I can get overridden pretty easily. If I want somebody to cover the cash register so that I can go take care of something, and a, and a, and, and a manager says, no, I need them doing this, you're on cash register, well... <laughs> All right, don't yell at me when the thing that I'm the only one who knows how to do doesn't get done, but okay, I'm, I'm kind of shoehorned there. So my position as supervisor and tech supervisor specifically, where most of the stuff that I do, I'm the only one in the store who can do, I have to do a lot of hands-on stuff um, not in, in the tech department very specifically. And that is a broad thing. In the store that I'm in, tech sales account for 65% of our yearly um, uh, of our yearly profit, of our, of our yearly sales. And that's what I'm overseeing. Obviously, I'm not overseeing the whole store like the store manager. Um, and I, but I'm also not overseeing a very 
fine specific segment of the store like uh, the, the print supervisor does. We, we do print services where I work. That supervisor gets to oversee a very fine, specific, focused, and concentrated section of the store that really doesn't deal with merchandising and ad and whatnot because they're behind a counter, they're doing print work, and they, they do a good job, don't get me wrong, but it's a very focused thing that is very easy to get done. While me, I'm overseeing 65% of, of our money, essentially. I'm overseeing 65% of the business, but without really the necessary authority to get other people involved in it. Um, and I'm not complaining. I, I, I enjoy my job. It's not what I want as a career. It's not what I want to be doing in, in five, ten years, but it's something I enjoy doing, and uh, it pays the bills pretty well. It's a full-time job. If I didn't have great benefits through my parents' health insurance, I'd have benefits. I've, I've got the option for a retirement plan, all that other stuff, which at 22, not a lot of people can claim. Now, you know, had I, got, had I, had I finished out college and all that stuff, I probably could be in a better place, but I'm in a good place for, where, for, for who I am in my life situation. I'm in a good place. But it's a, it's a two-part place. Like I said, I, I get the management side where I'm overseeing all of this section of the store. But I'm also on more of the, um, just the salesperson side, where as this tech supervisor and as a person in the store who knows the most about the stuff we carry in the tech department, I'm constantly on the floor interacting with customers. So I've got the overseeing side and the customer interaction side, while the managers can delegate other people to deal with customers and they can do the oversee, you know, the paperwork, the behind the scenes stuff, the redesigning, all, all that good stuff. And then they can delegate the part-timers or, or, the, or the lower level to, to do the actual sales, which many of them are good at. I, on the other hand, am, am, am stuck in that middle ground where I have to do both. I have to play manager and I have to play sales. I like sales, I like manager, and I do actually like both. I enjoy doing both, but so far this year, doing both has been an incredible stress and drain. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't want to reveal where I work on accident or anything like that, and I've probably already given enough hints to make it semi-obvious, and I apologize, by the way, if I'm out of breath. Um, as a quick aside, I'm actually... As I did on the last show, I'm recording this on my phone. You might even be able to hear my cat meowing in the background because my phone doesn't have the same noise-canceling stuff as my lovely, lovely microphone. To be honest, I think the voice quality on my phone is a little bit better than the microphone, but I'm going to have to switch back to it because when I'm on the phone, and you know, I don't want to sit. So I'm pacing around my room, and I'm pacing around my room, and I'm moving my arms up and down a lot, and I, I, I'm a very animated talker. Especially when I get into something like this. Moving around a lot. I get a good workout every single time. Now, I'm a physically fit guy. I'm a very physically fit guy. But talking a whole bunch. Well, I mean, have you ever tried to jog a mile while talking the whole time? I'm not jogging. But I'm probably going to end up pacing over a mile, mile and a half. Maybe even two. Maybe. During the course of this show, moving my arm. It, it's a physical activity. This is my exercise for the day. I apologize if you hear me breathing. I know you did in the last episode, uh, or if I lose breath and I have to pause. Anyway, aside from that aside and back to the main point, I think I figured out what 2015 had, or, <laughs> 2016, as you can also tell, the show is not scripted. I think I figured out what 2016 has in store for me, and that is management, not just you know, at, at work, which I'm up for another promotion, and that'd be very nice, and I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, I'll have to make sure that the that the hourly pay is gonna uh, is still gonna beat out what I average per check off my current hourly pay, which is lower, plus the commission I make during tech sales, which is really the only commissionable area of the store. Lucky me right now, which you know actually puts me pretty on par with entry level manager at this company. So I'm going to have to balance that out, but it's a promotion I'm up for. But I don't just mean management at work. 
And I don't just mean life management, although that's definitely something one should always work on. I mean internal management, the ability to manage what I'm doing and who I am and how I'm processing the things that I do, how I intake challenge and stressors, how I handle having to deal with multiple situations coming on to me at the same time and how I delegate that not only to other people externally, but how I delegate that to myself, how I handle having to remember and keep track of, of so many different things. I've always been a very, a very one track minded person. If I'm cleaning my room and a friend calls me and I answer that call, we talk for five, 10 minutes, boop, the cleaning the room's done. That part's over. Boop, done. I started doing something else. Now I'm off the phone with my friend. Oh, but the cat's meowing at me. Well, now I'm going to go cuddle with the cat. Oh, 30 minutes later, I'm done cuddling with the cat. But now I've got to use the restroom. Now I'm going to go to the restroom. Oh, I'm already in the restroom. Now I'm going to go ahead and shower. And that's kind of how I always go. I, I have trouble staying on a task. And I think, I think this year I'm really going to be pushed. I, so far, I really have been to not only stay on task, but keep track of multiple tasks and multiple things that I need to get done of in my head so that I can get them done. And I know there's a lot of people who are really good at this. Just naturally, it's not something I'm naturally good at. Now, I'm good at the management part of leading other people. I can boss people around just fine. And I can be good at it and I can be nice. And, and I can take care of that aspect. But it's the, it's the manager part when things aren't going well right? When there's, you know, three customers with problems, even if they're not problems caused by us, there's still problems that we have to deal with. There's two customers over here in tech that also have questions that the, the associates helping them don't know how to answer, but I do. And then I've also, you know, I'm on hold with this third party company trying to find out something for you know, a customer that isn't here, but maybe you know, we're working on their computer and I need answers for that. And when we've got these three, four, five, six things going on, that's historically not when I haven't gotten things done, but when I've gotten rattled at it, when I've, you know, snapped at somebody, not a customer, although I, <laughs> I'll be honest, I get a little bit snippy with them sometimes. Whoo, not a cash register. Folks, 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 if you see somebody, if you're shopping, and I don't, I don't work at this place, this is an example, stressing that, if you're shopping at, I don't know, Michael's, which doesn't even have a tech section, if you're shopping at Michael's, and you see a Michael's associate at not a cat re cash register, why would you assume that that is where you check out and, 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 and start handing putting your stuff on the counter. No, this is with the fabric. This is the fabric cutting area. The cash register is up front with the cash registers. It's the same thing for me. I have a tech area. Granted, I have computers all around me because it's the tech area. It's the computer bench. It's marked as such. There are no cash registers except for on the other side of the building. And yet all the time, people love to bring their merchandise up to me Okay, can I check out here? No, I'm not a cash register. You dits. You can walk literally 10 yards that way where there's four cash registers just sitting right there and somebody's smiling politely and waving at you. Hey, I can check you out. Whew, that's my rant. Drove me crazy today. Point is, I need to get more concise on these. That's one of the points. But point is, I think 2016 for me at least is the year of learning how to manage. How to manage other people, especially if I get you know, a management promotion. How to manage myself in terms of you know, staying, on, staying on task, uh, you know, you know, self-responsibility, getting the chores at home done that I need to get done, you know, things like that. Budgeting has already been a major, major thing. Not that I'm in a financial hole or anything like that, but I've gone from living with a roommate to not living with a roommate and taking over that financial burden. And that has <laughs> been a little bit of a pain so far. We'll get it, it'll get figured out. But bam, that was a start of the year with the rents due. Oh man, 
That's on me, isn't it? Whew. All right, we got a budget. Got it taken care of. But it's that self-control of, you know, if I didn't have the self-control, and if I didn't have the, the, the foresight to write down on my calendar, hey, this rent's on you. I might have gone out and, you know, gone out with my friends and spent $40 when I only had $30 to spend um, on going out. I might have gone to the grocery store and spent $80 when I only had, you know, $50 to spend on groceries for, for, uh, for, for the two weeks. That's what I mean with, with the external management. But the biggest one, I think, and the one that is going to really trigger the external stuff, the managing of other people and the managing of, of life itself, at least what I have control over, I think is managing myself internally. Working on that ability to keep calm when things aren't going right to you know accept in out release when i'm upset the ability to not you know not hold a grudge not be annoyed when you know the manager who the the store manager who the day before decided that they wanted the person designated as the cashier to go do something else, and they wanted me, the tech supervisor, to cashier for four hours. Which would be fine if the next day, the store manager didn't come to me and say, Hey, you needed to get this thing done yesterday, and you didn't. Well, of course I didn't. I spent half my shift stuck to a cash register because you decided the thing the cashier was doing was more important than what I needed to do. It's something that... 2015 David, 2015 David Matora, would hold against that manager for, for, for the day. I would let it ruin my interactions with that manager for the day. To the point where I, I, I've even made you know, snippy, douchey comments to the manager about things like that. Hey, you didn't get this done. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I was busy doing someone else's job because you told them to do something... That was not important or time sensitive. But, you know, my fault. I didn't get it done. That kind of thing. Which somehow, maybe because I'm really good at my job, and not to brag, but I am, I've been able to get away with. It, it doesn't sound bad. Because I'm obviously not irreplaceable. If I'm one in a million, there's a whole bunch more of me out there. There's definitely people who know tech better than me. And there's definitely people who are better at sales than I am. And there's definitely people who are better at, at management than I am. I think that much has been pretty clear. But I'm like a Toshiba. Right? HP laptops, I tell people what you want when you want performance. Dell laptops is what you want when you want physical durability. Acer laptops is what you want when you want something flashy and new. And a Toshiba is a little bit of all of them. It's not the most durable, but it's not the least. It's not the flashiest, but it's not the least. It's not the highest performance, but it's not the lowest performing. It's that good blend of all of them. Now, I don't want a Toshiba personally. I want an HP. But that Toshiba is a good blend of everything that the other big three that we sell are giving you. And I feel like that's kind of what I am. I'm the Toshiba. Of, of what I do, where I can be replaced with somebody who is better at tech. There's, there's a couple people at work who work under me who are better at, at fixing computers than I am. And I'll admit it. But they can't manage as well as I can. And they don't have the people skills to sell as well as I can. There's a people at my store, the operations manager is an amazing, he's an amazing person to person. He can close the sale, he can really enter, in, engage with the customers, and they, it, customers he helps always leave happy. Mind you too, but he is probably a better salesperson than I am. And I, I think we're roughly even with the management. He gets more done with his management stuff, but he's once again a manager versus supervisor. But I know more tech than he does. I, I, I guess the point I'm making is, I'm, while not irreplaceable at my job, I'm very valuable 
to the team. So I can get away, even though I shouldn't try to, I can get away with those occasional outbursts of bitchiness towards management in front of them to their faces. I shouldn't, shouldn't do that at all, but I can get away with it. You know, I can get away with being, you know, five to ten minutes late a couple of times a pay period. I can get away with that. That doesn't mean it's a good thing. And you know what? Maybe that's another part of the management for 2016. Being better about setting my alarms and being better about going to bed on time, which tonight is probably going to mean being better about recording the podcast on time. Whoops. And I wonder if that's really the big... The big lesson, not just for me, but for everybody for 2016, self-control. Management of the self. Because if you're not in control of yourself, and if you can't manage yourself, barring the rare few that escape their internal issues with external control, which maybe is not actually that rare of a few, but barring them, you can't effectively manage your external life, both You know, work, managing other people, managing tasks, to home, keeping it in order, to social commitments, to whatever else you have to do outside of yourself. If you can't properly manage yourself inside. And that's something I think has been preached to me a thousand times, and other people have preached a thousand times. But I think it rings very, very, very true this year. I mean, 2016, year of management. The year of self-control. The year of the introspection it takes to get us to figure out and identify what exactly it is keeping us from being able to manage ourselves. Addressing that. Getting that handle on ourselves. And then putting it outwards on everything else that, that we do actually have control over. I think that's definitely... I think that's definitely... I know that that's definitely the big thing for me in 2016. I can tell it already, because just the start, just, just, ah, couldn't snap. Hold on. Up. Ah, can I? Ah, there we go. Nope. There we go. There's a snap. The start change. That was the best one yet. Of how my work has been from the last shift of 2015. To the first shift of 2016, it, it could not be more night and day with the amount of stressors, with the amount of things I have to juggle, uh, and, and with the increased managerial role that I've been required to play without a decrease in the, in, in the, in, in the customer service end that I've been required to play. And obviously not suggesting the managers at my store don't engage in customer service. They obviously do. But I think it's fair to say that the, 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 cause there's associates, supervisors, managers, I think it's fair to say the associates engage with customers for more of the time they're in their building, the managers and supervisors, or at least my supervisoriness has to kind of do about half of both, which can definitely be a struggle. So that's, you know, I think that's going to be my big goal for 2016 is, is management, not necessarily to get in management, um, not necessarily to boss around other people, but just to be able to boss around myself. Because I can tell, you know, people in my work, hey, hey, person's name. Come here, come here, yeah, come here, come here. You fucked this up. Don't do it again, or I'll paper you. Get back to work. Other than that, actually, to be honest, you're doing a real good job. Okay, maybe I'm not that mean. Maybe I'm not that mean. Most of the time, nine percent of the time, I have threatened to paper people before. I don't even think that's an authority I have. I can write them up for shit. I can't fire them. Eh, write somebody up for shit enough times, they just get fired anyway. That's not the point. Wow, way to sound douchey. That's not the point. The point is, 2016, I think, is going to be the year of management for me. And I encourage you to figure out, and not a New Year's resolution kind of thing, because we all know you're going to break it. I know that. Ooh, self-fulfilling prophecy. David, have you ever kept a New Year's resolution? Nope. 
I don't mean that to disparage anybody of a New Year's resolution. I just mean, I, I, I think for New Year's, what we need to do is set a, a broad goal of self-improvement. You know, some people give up drinking. Some people give up candy, soda, cigarettes. They, they turn it into Lent on the Christian calendar. Well, you give up a vice for 30 days. And I think that's what a lot of people do with New Year's. Instead of, you know, picking something that permanently betters themselves, like, you know, working on self-control or self-management, or not necessarily saying, I'm going to go to the gym every day, but broadening that out to, I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to work on the self-control it takes to hit my goals. I think that's a better one, because then every time you do something that took the, you know, I could, you get home, you sit down, you fire up the PlayStation, you play a game, and then that little thing in the back of your mind says, hey, you were going to go to the gym tonight. And then you get up and do it. You get that, hey, boom, there's that self-discipline. I just did the thing. There's my New Year's. But at the other, on the other end, it could be, you know, driving home from work. You, you drive by that McDonald's, you're like, man, I could really go for some some hot, easy food. You start to pull into that parking lot, and then you think, you know what? I've got spaghetti at home. I've got meat sauce. I've got mushrooms for the meat sauce. I've got a nice bottle of wine. I'm not going to have this McDonald's. I'm going to go cook my food. I'm going to go save the money. I'm going to cook my food. It's going to feel good to me to cook and do that act. A little, little bit of self-love for me. And... Uh, yeah, I'm going to enjoy that a lot more than I'm going to enjoy this McDonald's. It's going to be better for me than this McDonald's. That's what I'm going to go do. There's, there it is again. That's your self-discipline. That's your self-control. And then even after you cook that meal, it could be, hey, you know, uh, I'll deal with the dishes in the morning. I just stuff myself up with pasta and wine. I'm going to bed. Well, you know, I know I'm not going to get those dishes done in the morning. I set my alarms for a very specific time. I wake up, you know, an hour to a half hour before I have to leave because I know that's how long it takes me to shake the sleep out of my head, get ready, uh, and go. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do those dishes. I, I understand I don't have, at this point, the wherewithal to, to get up extra early to do the dishes. I'm just gonna do them now. There's your self-control. So I think the best way to make a New Year's resolution is to make it broad, is to not focus on quitting something or not focus on one specific thing. I will go to the gym. I will get a new job. I, you know, I, I will quit smoking. I will quit drinking. I will cut down on sweets. But to broaden that out to something that you can actively achieve every day and you, and you can notice it when you achieve it. When you cut out sweets, if you actually can stick to it after a while, it's just not something you notice. The same thing with soda. I cut out soda at one point. I obviously haven't now. I need Dr. Pepper to survive. I understand this. It's an absolute necessity. If Dr. Pepper were ever to sponsor anything I do, I would, I would drink nothing but it. I'm going to be honest. If Dr. Pepper came up to me and said, Hey, David. You know how that little thumbnail over there says Domen Torres, The Nameless Show, and then the date? What if we said The Nameless Show, presented by Dr. Pepper, and the date? And in exchange, we're not going to pay you, but we're going to give you this magic little credit card that works at every single grocery store in America. With an unlimited line that we pay for, that can only be used on Dr. Pepper. I would probably save like 40 bucks a month right there. I would, I might forego getting a roommate just so I could fill the second room with Dr. Pepper. I'd actually also probably sub the Dr. Pepper out of that second room bootleg, you know. I'm not paying anything for it. Buy that two liter on sale for a dollar at Walmart, I don't care. It's on sale for a dollar at Walmart, all right, I'm selling these two liters for 75 cents. Boom, just down to cut the market. Money! <laughs> I'd love it if Dr. Pepper sponsored me. That'd be the best thing. Woo, that's the goal. Everybody, I haven't even mentioned it yet. Like, comment, 
subscribe. Most importantly, share the shit out of this. Put it on your Facebooks and put it on your Twitters and put it on your Reddits and all your other newfangled young people's social media that your grandparents have probably already discovered and ruined for you. I don't have that problem. I don't have grandparents. Ooh, I didn't mean it to be that dark. Did not mean to get that dark with it. Point is, share the shit out of this. Say, hey, look at this, listen to this bumbling idiot blabber. Quick. Or say, hey, you know, my name's John. John Johnson. And I work for Dr. Pepper. And I just watched this podcast where this guy goes on and on about work and him being a dick and learning how to manage himself and and setting good goals for yourself good broad important goals that one can hit on a regular basis not specific things that are very easy to fall off the wagon for and after that he started going on a tirade including various ridiculous voices that all probably sound well very different in his head less different over the Speakers I was listening to. But I, John Johnson, with Dr. Pepper, think it'd be a great idea to sponsor that man with Dr. Pepper. Somebody give me the Dr. Pepper corporate sponsor card of unlimited money. We're going to make him sign a thing that says he can't resell the doctor he buys with it and probably also a health liability waiver. This guy sounds completely addicted. I don't know how that happened. A lot of a lot of time in cans. Seriously, I love Dr. Pepper. But, it's gonna be great. We're gonna sponsor him, it's gonna be great. That's what I want. Share the shit out of this. It's the biggest way to grow the channel, it's the biggest way to grow the show. It shows me that, the, that what I'm doing with my time is worth it, that people are enjoying it, and that's the most I can ask uh, of anybody who's even slightly enjoying uh, what I'm doing here, is to just share the shit out of it. Whew. It's already been 32 minutes. It is now 0123. I'm not kidding. Looking at my phone right now. Rolling at uh, 12% somehow. Still, that's not bad. It is now 0123. That is fantastic. That is a great time. 0123, January 6th. 2016. I hope everybody has a wonderful January 6, 2016. I apologize for the very singularly topic show. And uh, it, it was a mess. It was a mess. That's my fault. I apologize. I recorded it tired. I'd already gone to bed and boop, popped right back up. There's that self-control. There it is. We brought it back around. There's a the self-management management. management. Control, self-control, there it is right there. 2016, I think for me, is going to be the year of self-control and a management of, of who I am inside, of keeping myself from getting stressed, of keeping myself from getting snippy, of learning how to manage me. And then from there, how to manage the other stuff within my control. And I would encourage everybody else, regardless of what your New Year's resolution is, regardless of... Of, of where you are in life to make that a 2016 focus. Let's make that this 2016, the year of management, the year of self-control, the year that we as a me, we as two people listening, we as five people listening, we as anybody listening to this decided that this year we're going to take pride in those small moments of self-control and self-management and self-discipline. We're going to take one moment a day into two moments a day into three moments a day and just snowball it until we are in control of ourselves and turn 2016 into the year of self-control and of self-management and of self-discipline. That's my goal for the year. That's my 2016 goal. It's to be my own internal manager. It's to not let myself be ruled by emotions, not let myself be ruled by stress, not let myself be ruled by apathy, which I guess is also an emotion, 
That was a very broad thing. That was not the time to be broad. I was trying to list things that didn't work out very well. The goal this year is to be my own boss. Be the boss inside of me. Not let mad fuel me. Not let stress fuel me. Not let reckless abandon fuel me. Not let passion fuel me. Let me fuel me. That's the goal. And I encourage everybody else to go out. Make that your goal too. With self-management and self-control and self-discipline, turn 2016 into the year you took control of yourself. Thank you everybody for watching the show. Mostly listening to the show because it's obviously a podcast with, you know, basically just a thumbnail behind it. Like, favorite, comment, subscribe, share. Hope you have a fantastic day. We'll see you again Friday, January 8th. Peace.